Hi, Steph here at Creative Nomad Studios. We're going to do something a little different this afternoon. I'm going to do a sort of an unboxing with some gouache paint and then we're going to try them out, do a little comparison and just talk a little bit about what gouache is. And uh, I'm very new to gouache myself. So I'll be going through this uh, as a beginner with you, okay? So, um, sorry, I'm just getting a little bit of instructions um, from my camera person here, Anita. Yeah, Thank you. Okay. I think Anita is asking me to make sure to let you know that there is a chat on the right side of the screen if you have any uh, questions, but most importantly, be sure to say hello. Uh, oh yes, of course. I'm forgetting all the things. We are doing a giveaway at the end of the month, which is like next next live stream in next, an hour. In an hour, we're doing the giveaway in an hour. Sweet. Yeah. Okay. So, have we decided what we're giving away? Um, one of our kits, a kit of choice. A kit of choice. That's pretty sweet. Could be this gouache kit. Could be the gouache kit. Um, if you're curious about what we have, I think they're all up uh, on the about to create dot shop Some site. Are, yeah. mm -hmm. So, okay, so this giveaway will be for um, anyone who has commented, shared uh, with the hashtag about to create or Creative Nomad Studios. Um, if they, um, if they share their work on social media, if they share their work on social media, and tag. Okay. And what about comments in the... I'll put the information across the bottom okay, of the perfect. screen. Okay, perfect. Anita's going to put all the information along the bottom of the screen. So you can get in on that giveaway that we're doing this afternoon. Uh, while Anita's doing the um, the next live streaming, which is at 2 o'clock. And that is uh, at part one of uh, color theory. Really good, important stuff to know uh, as an artist. So be sure to tune into that as well. But I'm going to get going on gouache uh, so so in a nutshell gouache is um, it's it's like an opaque watercolor so it's a uh, base so watercolor paint is pigment in a water soluble um, binder typically made from gum arabic solution with different things that can be in it or it could be just pure gum arabic um, whereas your acrylic paint is in a um, an acrylic binder Oil paint is in an oil base. The gouache is more like a uh, watercolor in that it is um, rewettable. When you when you when it's dry, you can rewet it. So, like um, you can get the pans of watercolor pa paint that's dry. You can use those. Um, gouache is similar to that. Um, whereas with an acrylic paint, once it's dry, it's dry. And same with oil paint. Uh, but the difference with gouache and watercolor is that uh, gouache has is more opaque, whereas watercolor is quite transparent. Um, so we're what we're going to do today is take a look at three different gouache sets. I'm going to open them up and show you what's in them. Uh, tell you a little bit about what you could expect to pay for them if you purchase the full set at one of the um, local art supply stores and then we're just going to um, try them. I'm going to try them and show you a comparison uh, between the three. And then I also do have some watercolor paint and some acrylic paint so we'll do a quick comparison between those two as well. And uh, if you have any questions while we're working along today, if you're part of this live stream, uh, you can just pop them in the comments uh, right here along the side of the screen and Anita will let me know what they are and then I can hopefully answer them for you um, based on my very limited uh, understanding of how gouache works. So um, going to get started with the Artist Loft brand and I'm just going to put it right here so you can get a bit of a uh, see the packaging. I believe this was $7.99 at Michael's, which is the only place you can get this particular brand. Um, one thing to note about gouache is unlike acrylic oil and watercolor, there are really limited um, kits and gouache um, uh, brands. Um, you go on to any art supply store, you're going to see um, just 
an overwhelming abundance of oils, watercolors, and acrylic paints that you can purchase where it seems to be quite limited with gouache. So I'm not entirely sure why that is, um, but we were lucky to get our hands on this uh, student level, very inexpensive artist loft gouache paint. Um, so I'm going to open this up and I'm just going to pick out some primary colors and some white and we'll sample it. So lots of plastic, which I'm not a huge fan of, but <clears throat> so I'm going to grab some yellow, white, and red, blue and red. So we'd say these are their kind of primary colors and white. I'm just going to take a little dot of each and put it onto this palette. Okay, one thing I noticed the first that happened is a little bit of dried paint came out of the tube, um, but it's not separated at all. It was just a tiny little bit, so that's not too bad. Sometimes these more water-based paints will separate quite a bit in the tube and you have to shake them up. Let me get you to adjust your mus mic just a tiny bit. Yeah. Back up. There you go. Are nice. we better? Yep, okay. we're better. Thank you. And some yellow and a little bit of white. So we're running a nice skeleton crew on our live set today. So I'll have to uh, bear with us as we do some instructions back and forth. If anything, uh, if anything needs to be adjusted, please let us know. Yeah, make a comment. Yeah, I you think can just we're make good. a comment, let us know, everything. because Anita's doing the camera and also monitoring the live feed, which is about 15 seconds off. Is that right, Anita? 20, yeah. 20 seconds off. <laughs> so, okay, so here's the thing that I understand about the gouache, is that you can work from the palette straight onto your um, paper. So just to let you know, I'm using a mixed media paper. Uh, this paper is not quite as heavy as watercolor paper. Um, it doesn't have as much of a porous um, uh, face, but it is it is made to be able to be used with wet media. So it's a good one for gouache. Um, and uh, typically when you use watercolor paint, you would dilute it quite a bit. And with acrylic paint, you don't want to dilute it very much at all. Um, so I'm going to try three different ways. I'm going to try really diluting it and not diluting it at all, and then something kind of in between. So I'm just going in with that red. So what does it? I don't understand what a. This is acrylic gouache. Right? No, this is this is a traditional gouache. Okay. So this would be basically it's a watercolor paint, and whatever whatever the, it is that they add to it to make it opaque right it still makes it that it's similar enough to a watercolor paint that you can re like you can re-wet it once it's completely dry so right. there's no acrylic there's no plastic in it hmm. so here is our diluted red artist loft paint and now i'm just going to do kind of an in-between. I mean, you do a lot of watercolor. How does that feel to you? It actually feels really similar to watercolor, um, but it didn't dilute as much as the watercolor would. Now what we're going to see is how much it lightens when it dries, because the watercolor paints do tend to lighten quite a lot when they dry. Um, whereas with a lot of acrylic paints, they the shift to is toward a, a darker hue when it dries. Um, this 
seems to be drying really quickly. And the color didn't really shift. Sorry, I need to remember when I pick it up not to move it down. The you, were, you, you were close. It's good. So this is like totally dry. There's no transfer wow. that is, and it looks really similar. And it has not shifted um, to lighter really at all. So if it dried that fast on the paper, is it drying that fast on your palette? No, it's not. Um, but if I had mixed, so what I'll do is I'll sample these colors and then I'll mix a color and we'll see how fast it dries on us. So I'm just going to go in and use like undiluted, unwatered down paint. And I'm going to tell you, I think that painting with gouache like this is going to be a really expensive hobby. One of the things about watercolor that I love is that you can dry it down into a little pan, <coughs> excuse me, and then re-wet it when you use it and it lasts like for a really, really long time. So I got a nice rich darker red there with it so undiluted. Ronnie Lee says hello. Hi Ronnie Lee. And Lynn, thank you Lynn for correct letting us know that the sound is better now. Thank you. Has anyone that's here today, have you used gouache before or been curious about it before hearing about what we're doing today? Oops. That wasn't us, I promise. Hey, it's a, it's a co-work space. It is. Yeah. So we're upstairs in our, in our uh, live set, but there are other people around. So and a really and cute puppy. And we have Kingston on site today. <laughs> He's a studio puppy for real, and he's our five-month-old Shih Tzu. Oh, and he's very curious about the camera stand. So. Yes, he is. <laughs> I'm just going into the blue and doing the same thing. So, so this Rocky says no, she hasn't used um, a gouache before. And gouache, a lot of people make the mistake of thinking that because gouache isn't very um, well known that it's a contemporary medium, but it's actually one of the oldest types of paint. That's as much history as I can give you, but uh, it's definitely not new. Okay, so this is a slight, like, kind of in-between dilution. And then I'm going to go right into it and just grab some paint. <laughs> So if you can hear what sounds like thundering elephants, <laughs> that uh, is a five. That's a five shits. pound ball of fury. <laughs> He's running up and down this hardwood flooring with his toy. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. I really like that, how um, sorry, uh, opaque that is. The. Yeah. Yeah, it's and gonna, it's thin. It is, and so you can work on paper, which is awesome. I love working on paper, um, and you can do more sort of like illustrative stuff. So I am kind of excited to get more into using this with some illustrations that I've been sort of playing around with, um, because I do find with watercolors uh, sometimes I don't get that oomph that I'm looking for in uh, in a picture that I'm doing and this might be the solution for that so we will see okay I'm just going to go into the yellow oops I do have just so you know I don't know if you can see it but I think um, I think I've got it far enough off to the side that you can't see it. I am working with two things of water. I always do. <clears throat> one is white, uh, is just to wet my brush and the other one is to clean off my brush. So every time I go in to get my, to wet my brush before I dilute this paint, I'm using a pure white, wet, pure clean water. And then the other one is for cleaning off my brush. Um, just You cannot see the water. Okay. Just so you know. So just a little tip when you're getting started with, um, well, I mean, I think it's probably a good idea with any painting, but specifically with painting that requires diluting the paints. So we have um, someone watching today, and I don't know who it is because it's a nickname. 
But I've used, uh, but wanted to try. So I'm watching without buying first. And I appreciate that. And this is why we've picked three gouaches. One is seven ninety nine. One was seventy nine. <laughs> Almost. Yeah, we have a really expensive one here. <laughs> we have a really expensive one. And if you want to try all three, we've actually put together a kit that's twenty four ninety nine or something like that that gives you all three with some paper and a brush. And it really will let you know whether the seven ninety nine is what you want or the seventy nine is what you want. Mm -hmm. Lynn says she has had a set forever. Use the white on watercolors. Mm -hmm. And she her brand is Reeves. Reeves, yes. So Reeves is a similar oh. um I think it's a it's a it's it's a definitely an old company that's been around for a long time. But I've bought Reeves stuff before, um, for various things. And I think it's a similar price point to this, maybe a little bit higher, the artist loft one. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, and I looked for it, to be honest with you, but I couldn't find it, so. Hi, Donna. Hi, Donna. Okay, so Don here's... Donna was our unknown named person. Aha. That yellow is quite pretty. I okay, like that yellow. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, I'm just going to mix some with a little bit of white, and then I'm going to try layering over top. Um, and then maybe what I'll do is I'll make... I'll make a little tiny quick composition here and layer something over top because the promise of um, being able to layer light colors on top of dark colors makes gouache really attractive um, as a as like a water-based media that you can layer like you can't do that with watercolor paint so that's kind of where I'm the most curious about gouache. I'm kind of yeah. curious about the acrylic gouache. Oh, yeah. Because I feel like as an artist that does realism, it might be a an interesting thinner medium that's opaque. Right. Yeah. Kind of thinking that. So the paint is staying pretty wet on the palette, and it's just a plastic palette, so if it's going to dry out anywhere, this is where it'll happen. And I've made this really pretty pink. That is pretty. And so what's going to happen here is the white is automatically going to make it just that much more opaque. Um, and as Donna was mentioning, she's used, um, I think it was Donna or Lynn. Lynn. Lynn, say, thank you. Um, she has used white gouache on top of watercolor, which is a really fun um, way to play around with um, using the both medias together. So, yeah, I like that. Let's see what happens if we put a little bit of yellow in there. Bit of a peachy color. I mean, I'm not going to be surprised at all if we can layer something that has white in it over top of something that doesn't. What I'm curious about is, will I be able to layer this yellow on top of this blue? I'm not really sure that that's going to happen. If it was an acrylic paint, it would take probably a few layers, even if it was an acrylic paint, because the yeah, yellow is sure. so... Yeah, so we'll see. Now, I'm being a little impatient, to be honest. I should have probably waited a couple minutes for that to dry more. But there's what it looks like on its own. Let's see what it looks like on top of. The interesting thing, I think, at the end will be to do a little quick demo with watercolors and see what the comparison is there. Because, yeah, we can definitely. So there, not so much. And I picked up some of that blue. So unlike acrylic paint, I don't know if you can see that when I went through there, even though the paint is dry, the wetness from the peach paint going on top of the blue paint, it, it re-wet that blue paint. It picked it up. It's now in my brush, and it's now on the palette. You see that? 
And now let's see what's happened. But mm -hmm. yeah. So, and this is, I did comment on this when I wrote the, um, the little write up that goes in with the kit is that, um, you have to be careful layering them for that exact reason because the wet paint can reactivate the paint that's underneath. So, maybe I will try the Windsor and Newton designers gouache next but one thing I want to do first is I just want to see what happens if we layer a pure pure color because I feel that without white it's going to be still quite transparent but so I'm being really careful not to get too much water on my brush here just enough to sort of wet it a little bit Going in with the yellow, let's see what it looks like on top of this red. And I'm going to try to lay it down really carefully. But if you have to be super, super gentle with it, I'm not sure that that's going to be a winning quality for me, <laughs> <laughs> to be completely honest. For anybody, really. Okay, so that shows a bit of promise. Might be able to go in there later with a second layer and see. That actually went on pretty opaque. So why do you think that looks like from where I'm looking, that looks green? Mm -hmm. I think that we can see the blue shining through the yellow, which is making green. I didn't know if it mixed it or is it just coming through? Blue is just showing through. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so this probably looks kind of orange as well. No, not as much as, not I as guess the blue is a stronger color, mm -hmm. maybe. Yeah. So, okay, so that's a little, a little swatch and demo of the artist loft. Yet, we'll see how we do with time. I might want to play with those a little bit again later. You're at 123. Okay, yeah, so I need to remember how fast time goes by when you're playing with art supplies. And Anita's going live at two. Because we're going to speed <laughs> things up a little bit for y'all. Okay, so here we go. Windsor and Newton Designers Gouache. Uh, this retails at, I believe it was $75. Yeah. Um, and um, uh, I wasn't able to find it anywhere else in this size to get a similar comparison. So... That's what we're at. Uh, this is considered a, um, it doesn't say professional level um, paint, and it's um, popular with designers um, because of the flat, um, the way that it settles flat. So for doing uh, posters and um, artwork that would be uh, uh, require a uh, a flat paint that's got a really good high pigment, if that makes sense. That's my understanding of it. So, six tubes versus the 12 that we had in the artist loft. Are they the same size? No. So these are 20, uh, these are 14 milliliters, and the artist loft ones are 12 milliliters. Oh, so pretty much the same. So very close. Yeah. Right. Okay, so these ones are seven ninety nine, and these ones are like almost ten times that price for half the paint. Half? So there you go, oh, yeah. right. ten times the price for half the paint. So, so 20, twenty times twenty times the the price. Okay. Yeah. So this is where the this is um, yeah, this is the big uh, the big pricey one. So now I can see how much paint I use. I'm going to put a lot less onto the palette. Yeah, please. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Please do. <laughs> it's fun getting to experiment. I can tell now that the blue is going to be quite a different. This looks a lot more like a like a phthalo blue, and this is our primary blue. What is the? It's, it's more like an cer uh, cerulean. Um, the cerulean. artist loft is cerulean, and this one is a uh, primary. So primary is more <laughs> yellow. Usually has leans to the yellow hmm. usually 
And this, yeah, so they're just called primary red, primary um, blue, and primary mm. yellow. Interesting. And the artist loft ones are called, uh, I believe, crimson. Yeah, so crimson red, cerulean blue, and lemon, lemon yellow. Mm. I wish there was a standard. I know, right? <laughs> I wish there was a standard on, on clothing sizes so I could order some cute clothes online. <laughs> I know, I'm teaching color theory next, and one of the hardest things is, is to tell people which blue to get, which red, which, because it's just ridiculous. Look at how pink that is. Oh, that's nice. That's really pink. Huh, it's like a quinacridone almost. Oh, look how transparent that is. Wow. Hmm. Interesting. That's really watercolory. Yeah, but really nice coverage though, right? Like hmm. it, can I tell you, it doesn't look streaky no. from my side. Can you does it look streaky on the artist loft? Yep. Yeah. And grainy? Yep. Yep. So uh higher quality. Um probably like so I've been making paint and it's amazing. It's just been amazing. I've been at it for a year, and I'm still not ready to, to share them because every single batch comes out different, and sometimes they're just beautiful, and other times they're terrible, and they'll have little grains of um, pigment that hasn't been um, dispersed into the binder properly, and it's like, sheesh. Yeah, there's a lot more to it than I expected. Uh, it's been a humbling experience, that's for sure. So this is the like kind of half diluted, which looks just as diluted. It looks the same. It looks exactly the same. And then I'm just going to go in and grab some straight paint. That would be an expensive painting. Very expensive painting. <laughs> I mean... 14 mils. Seriously? <gasps> so that's the red. It's... It looks smooth, even it like is. I'm just telling you, is it? Yeah, it's nice and smooth. Oh. I'm being mindful of the time now that I realize how quickly time's going by. Yeah, we're at uh, one thirty. We're good. Okay, so here's our blue diluted. That's pretty. I feel like we can see the quality. I can, f I feel like, um, this feels like it goes on smoother. It looks <coughs> smoother. Like on the paper, from mm. what I can see through yeah. the camera. Um, the top looks streaky, like it looks like the pigment is, um, especially when it's half diluted. Right. Mm. Yeah. And that's what you would uh, typically expect from a watercolor. So, I mean, if this is intended to be painted with undiluted, it's a very costly way to paint, unless you're using the sort of um, bottom of the line, um, you know, seven ninety nine ones, I guess, right? So then I'm not really sure. In your opinion, because you do a lot of watercolor, how does this compare to, say, your top brand watercolors that you're using? Um, well, it actually feels a lot like watercolor paint, to be completely honest with you. Yeah. So... Does it behave differently in any way? Uh, the, I'd say that the layering, but I'm going to be honest with you, I don't do, I haven't really done a whole lot of experiments trying to layer light on top of, like, this type of stuff. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. This yellow is gorgeous, I'm just going to say. That's it diluted. I wow. don't think it's going to get a whole lot better than that. That's amazing. That's. It's so pretty. So pretty. 
So it'd be interesting to see if we could do like a wet and wet technique like we would do with watercolors. I mean, I think maybe it would be neat to have these so that you had the verse, like so that they're more versatile, like you can use them like a watercolor or like a, in a traditional sort of gouache um, way. But I don't know, it's possible that you could end up just having a white gouache with your watercolor kit as well. Or you can just buy everything and be like, I had to buy it. I had to try it, right? <laughs> I needed it for my kit. Okay, these all look pretty much the same, right? No. Oh, no, well, that yes, one's darker. No. Yes. Okay, so um, a little bit of white. And I'm just, oh, so that one came out quite separated. I don't know if you can see that. That's like a yeah. kind of. So that would be the base kind of separating away from the paint. I just gave it a little shake. Look at that. That's all separated. Really? Yeah. Okay. See so the difference? Now, See how it's kind of yeah. oily looking? Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm going to make that peach, so I'm not going to bother cleaning out my brush. Oh, that's pretty. That's a stuff color right there. That's totally a stuff color. So one thing I'll tell you about these Windsor & Newton designers gouache is the pigments are really pretty. And they are really um, staying nice and pure. <clears throat> that's an interesting idea, Lynn. She says she has some old uh, watercolor pictures that she's adding emphasis with the undiluted gouache. So just because it's a much stronger color. I love that. I'd love to see that. Look at that over top. That's lovely. Here we go on to the red. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> there. <laughs> right there. <laughs> okay. Answer. Even that. Interesting. Yeah. And once again, I picked up a bit of the blue. Hmm. Which you expect, because right? Or not? Um, I don't know. So one thing I have noticed while making paint is that some paints, um, once they're fully cured, will still have a bit of a transfer if you rub the top of the little pan where others will not transfer over even while they're still a little bit soft. So I think it's one of those things where, you know, like each pigment requires its own specific formula and will behave differently through all stages of its little painty life. So maybe this one, maybe this, maybe blue just, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to put these aside and we're going to talk about this. So when I purchased this, I didn't realize that it was an acrylic gouache. So this is like, uh, this is made by the company Holbein and uh, I, it's a Japanese um, company and they've made this acrylic gouache. So it will not re-wet once it's dry. Um, it's basically an acrylic paint that's going to lay flat like gouache does I'm assuming so hmm. so this one would be something I would be really interested in trying yeah you own it so you can try oh, that's it. right <laughs> so here I we have five tubes and these are those um uh their primaries primary magenta primary yellow primary cyan primary white, primary black, 20 milliliter tubes, five of them. And I believe this was $39 or somewhere around there uh, from Curry's Art Supply. It kind of sounds okay from a price standpoint. Mm -hmm. Unless you're, you know, I mean, it's just, um, so what does that work out to be? Like uh, $8 a tube? Um, it depends on how fast you go through it and what you're doing with it, right? When you, when you compare, I mean, you would expect to pay a lot more than that for that size of watercolor, like a really good watercolor. I don't know what you would expect to pay for acrylic. Isn't the point of that paint to um, 
be able to use it thin, but still have high pigment. That's gouache, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. So I don't think there's any point in buying gouache and then watering it down like watercolor. However, if you wanted to get watercolor and gouache, maybe you would get the gouache and use it like water. Like if you could only get one or the other, maybe just try gouache because you can use it like watercolors. I could be completely wrong. But you can't use this like a watercolor in the way that it comes out really fast, by the way. I didn't even squeeze it. I just... <laughs> <laughs> So okay. this stuff is, once it's dry, it's dry. Once it's dry, it's dry. And but the point uh, is it's supposed to be opaque, really opaque. O opaque and lies flat like a watercolor, um, blendable. Uh, yeah. Okay, let's yeah. get on with it. Let's get on with let's it. get it done. Get her done. Any questions in there at all? Anybody kind of, you know, wondering... In the last minute, if I can cram something in. In the last couple minutes. What so would you like? To, okay. What would you like to see Steph quickly paint when she's oh yes this yes thing? okay give me a challenge. Five minute challenge. Because we've got to transfer over and then Anita goes live at two. Yeah, I know. Which is in like twenty three minutes. <laughs> yeah, twenty. And Three, I was yeah. worried that I'd be like, okay, I'm done. And you'd be like, but it's only been like seven minutes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, that's pretty. These are really nice. I love those. Love that color. It's like a, it's like a quinacridone. Oh, so, is. I mean, a, an acrylic that you can use on paper. Hmm. I mean, I suppose you could use any acrylic paints You can use any on acrylic paper. on a, on a multi. On a multimedia. Yeah. Yeah. That's really nice. It's so rich and vibrant. I'm curious to see what the yellow does over top of the blue mm -hmm. or any of those colors. Oh, I didn't try the yellow um, Windsor Newton over top of those, did I? Mm -mm. No. Okay, so there's the diluted blue. Halfway. It doesn't look a lot different. No. It doesn't feel different. We're going in just straight up blue. Hmm. That's a feel good color, eh? It's pretty. Something about that color just brings me right back to my childhood. Do you know what it makes me think of every time is those big crazy Christmas lights that were like this big that were all different colors. <laughs> And I mean, I'm up in the Northwest Territories, so we have like <laughs> seven feet of snow in everybody's yard. That's what that color makes me think of. All right. Yellow Holbein Acrylla. Kind of loving this stuff. And then the, the slightly diluted or kind of halfway between doesn't seem to be different with any of them. Does it? No. I think it's like all or one or one or the other, maybe. Well, I don't know. In that color, in the red, it's definitely different. No, the one, yeah, the one you're working on. Yeah. Now. Yeah. But definitely not in the blue. It's nice. So it's not, it's not, um, it flows really nicely. It's. I have to say that looking at that piece of paper, the blue, an artist loft blue, looks very sad. It does Sorry. look sad. It, it looks like a sad blue. It's a sad little blue. It's pretty, it's, pr I actually think it's a really pretty color, but it looks really grainy and um, just That's not very. Color, it's just not. Not well, it's not, not well bright. done. It's not a bright, beautiful blue. Well, in comparison to all of these uh -huh. as well. And same with the, um, that kind of peachy color that I made. Uh -huh. um, yeah. Which you're so famous for. Apparently. Well, you are. Apparently, I love this color. You do. All right, here we go. The Steph cover. A different view version oh. of it. Ah. There you go. Instant happy. All right. 
So these haven't been on the on the paper for very long. Let's see what happens. Because um, this does not re-wet, so we shouldn't really get any. Oh, there you go. Hmm. Okay, so that would require, look at how much more opaque. That's possible that I have more white in this color. I didn't, I didn't use a formula to mix it. I mixed it pretty quickly while I was chatting with you. More white will make anything more opaque. So there we go. Um, do we have time to do a quick watercolor comparison? And maybe throw, and I won't do the full thing, but what I'll do is grab. We're at 142. Okay, I'm going to be very quick about this. And uh, if you're interested in a part two gouache, once I have a little bit more of a foundational understanding of how it works, let us know and we'll be sure to put that together for you. Um, let's see. Oh, this is a Windsor and Newton Cotman. It's a student line, um, but they're quite nice for student grade paints. Uh, watercolor. So, um, Dawn is asking what paper. Is this a multimedia? Yes. Okay, so, so this is a Fabriano multimedia paper. Um, you can buy it uh, online at Desairs. .ca. Does Curry's carries it? I don't believe Curry's carries this particular brand, but I could be wrong. I don't. I don't think they do. No. So it is a. Um, it's a beautiful multimedia paper. It's my favorite. Uh, would you frame this under glass or no? Frame it under glass? Yeah. You yeah. Could. Yeah. I think you could, or you could actually wax seal it. Probably, yeah, you can wax like seal it for sure. Yeah. And could it be used on wood or canvas? Oh, Thoughts. wouldn't it be great to have a canvas here? I don't think so. Um, I have played around with watercolors on canvas before and it doesn't stick. It needs something to absorb into my understanding. So I'm going to say probably not. Canvas, acrylic a, primed, a primed wood you might be able to have more success with. Um, with the acrylic gouache, probably, because the acrylic is, it's got that acrylic base, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think so. Yeah. I think the acrylic gouache, you could probably do that on um, anything, really, that you would use acrylic on. I would think so. Yeah, I would mm -hmm. think so. Maybe we should try it. We'll report back to you, Donna. These are the watercolors. Uh, so, yes, quite a bit more transparency, especially with that blue. Mm -hmm. What brand watercolors? This is the Windsor Newton. Windsor and Newton Cotman. Yeah, yeah, I can see it. So, why not throw some acrylic into the mix? What do we got? We got one minute left? Yep. I've got some acrylic paint. Windsor and Newton Galleria. So this would be the same kind of like student grade. Windsor and Newton, I think, I truly believe make a really nice student grade product with their, whereas a lot of like other yeah, brands. the Galleria is, a, is, I feel, not a student-student grade. I think it's a step up. I think it behaves a bit step up. Right. I've always referred to it as a student grade. I hope I haven't uh, offended anyone. Yeah, I'm not sure I would completely consider it to be I well, I just always uh, thought that they made really high and higher end student quality products. Like when you look at the price for point and mm -hmm. uh, okay, so I here's think a our better way of saying it is literally that they make a, a on a, for your money. It's actually a very good print, paint. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 
Yeah. And I love their cad red. So this this would be um, this is two hundred milliliters, and it would be what around twelve ninety nine maybe for one of these. Uh, depends on the color. I think they're still I, they. Do they price by color? By color? I believe okay. So. Yeah, fourteen ninety nine, maybe nineteen uh, max nineteen ninety nine, but I'm gonna say it's like in the fifteen dollar range for that. Right, and then the sixty milliliter one. Oh, they're like it's around six dollars or yeah. something. Yeah. Okay, so there's our red acrylic paint. There's our blue acrylic paint. So Donna meant the acrylic gouache. So Oh, um, on on acrylic or on canvas? Uh, uh, yeah, definitely the wood or the canvas uh, for sure. I think so. I wouldn't mm -hmm. know why you wouldn't. I think if I was going to do a project with acrylic gouache on canvas, I would do a bit of research first just to save myself the agony of doing a project and then finding that it separates from the canvas a year or two years later. Um, that would just be my, that would be my, my only kind of caveat to mm -hmm. trying it. Otherwise, try anything, right? Yeah. Try anything. And here's our yellow. And... I cannot believe how fast the time went by. So there is watercolor, standard acrylic, acrylic gouache by Holbein. That's the Windsor, that's the Des Windsor and Newton Designer Series, and that's our Artist Loft mm -hmm. Series. Let us know if you'd like me to get to know acrylic or uh, gouache better and uh and do a, a do tutorial a and do a pr project um a little bit later and i will definitely make that my own personal mission thanks for tuning in uh, we will be live again in about 15 minutes okay bye